the way I'm going, if I stay like this, it's more in keeping for me actually to become a trade centre because I haven't got the plush office for you to sit in and do your financing. I haven't got the tarmac or or stone chip um, viewing area outside, all that kind of stuff. So in order to in order to take a step forward, that's why I need to move to next. But I don't actually have a desire to move to the next. So if I want to do more volume, then it actually makes sense to sort of go the yeah. trade route trade because out. that kind of stuff doesn't matter then, does it at all? Where, you, know where you are, though, you it, Dave's about to say the same thing. Where yeah. you are, you could sell whatever you want. Gosh, that's exactly what I was going to say. If you've got the right car, it doesn't matter if you're trading it from a back street garage. If, but like, say we had this Audi A7, you know, so many cars we sell with people not even coming to our premises. They just ring up Zoo or ring up Car Finance 24-7 and they don't even see us. They just get it yeah. delivered to their house. And oh, I hate it. that. I hate that. Well, you've got that whole delivery, like they've built up in their mind, this thing is going to be like a brand new car and then it gets delivered and they pick holes in it and then you've got to pay for the transport to get the car back again. I hate that side of yes, things. Do you know what? I've between. never had to do that. No, I tell a lad, we've, we've done it once in this last year with a, uh, a, a little Peugeot 308, something to do with the wet belt. He reckoned the wet belt was knackered. So we went, oh, look, we'll just give you the money back. That's the only time it's happened. I wanted to just, I knew you were going to do with this. <laughs> I wanted to say, yeah, you know, because I've probably you talked about it a million times. I want to go and, I want to go and see um, yeah, Rory, yeah. Rory at RS. Yeah. This is, uh, let, uh, yeah, this is, you've had him on the podcast before, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, Rory. Yeah, he started off with a car really wash. And this is the sort of stuff he sells. It's all, if it's not like a supercar or a sports car or whatever, then it's like the top of the range, you know, kitted out, tricked out example of everything. And it's all. I do admire the people with these businesses. It is cool. It must be fun going to work every day with that stuff. I know there's probably still stresses, but this still is be what better I want than to work I-10. This is what I'm. I'm now starting to think that I, you know, I almost got to do with having a smaller business. But have you the, seen Cubic sort of Cars of... on um, TikTok? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's got. Nice he's got. He's got, got a nice show setup. That unit and everything. Yeah, it's gorgeous, I... isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. Well, his his setup though. He, he looks like he get probably about 10 cars maximum, and that would stress me out. He might have 10 grand in a car, but I still feel like that's really hard to turn them over. He's Where invested Corey, like 40 just on his customer waiting area, I'd say, isn't he? Just all that panelling and, yeah, and pool yeah, yeah. tables and sofas and shit like that. Um, I'm allowed to swear on this podcast, I don't know. Yeah, fuck <laughs> it. But I, I think what Rory's doing, this is, you know... This so is... Are, look, quarter of a million pound cars, and let's just have a quick look on Google Maps. Where is it? It's this one here. I was interested in the photo then as well, because that would stress me out. I had the lines on the floor underneath the car on a five grand car, let alone a quarter of a million. I'd be like, I've got to find a spot where there's no shrubbery in the background. Well, I think they no... go into like a gym car park or something and just take the pictures there. Jesus. But this is it. So it's like the back of a factory, the canal behind it. This is, I guess, is all of his cars and whatever. But I think that's like their valet and shed. I think they've probably got, maybe they've got a nice little office in there. I don't really, haven't really seen. I, I'm hoping I'll get in touch with them at some point and go and visit and just kind of check it out because... You know, they must have millions and millions of pounds worth of stock, but this is where they're not on a fancy like trade the glass fronted, you know, whatever. Yeah. Just as a just as a you know, just to get your head out of Yeah, you, uh, you know, you can't do it from where you are. Your place. Then. If I had your place, you've got all that space around the back and all around the front. I'd have that ram packed and yeah. get those six cars you've got in there out. Put a bit of glass across that blue bit where you are there. Nice fancy office with one or two cars that you can stick in there. Like the sky's the limit where you are. That's the thing is, I'm funny about that as well. I'm like, right, my prep cars, I've got to get them all inside. So they're all, but then obviously you guys, all your cars are outside. So when someone comes to view a car, do you like pull it out and clean it beforehand or do they just view it with the rainwater or whatever's on it already? Depends what it is. in the summer, it's not too bad. Like we don't actually mind people looking at cars in front of the showroom, but then in the winter, it does help have an indoor space. Uh, we will pull the cars in the showroom, but at, at this time of year, it's it's great. Like people just are not bothered at all. I think it's more as long as you've got good pictures online, you can sell yeah. any car you want. Yeah, no, it's, it's true. I've thought about that, moving less stuff out of here and actually having the more interesting stuff in here rather than the retail stock, having the like the the Firebird and, and the, the MGB, um, MX-5 MGB and all that kind of stuff like polished up and parked up in here. 
um, and make it more interesting environment than having the cars sort of wedged side by side in here like they have got at the moment. Which is, I mean, yeah, I know, you've seen data. data. It's kind of like they're all wedged in. Uh, I mean, that suits what you're doing right now because it feels like a trade car type thing, you know. But if you did, you, you probably don't want to go into like higher end stuff with riskier, bigger margins and whatever. But you know, I'd I'd love to have. To be honest, I'd love to have your units and the space that you've got because that would solve my issues of not having enough space or whatever because you've got a, a brilliant big thing and you've got the unit next door as well so i'd have yeah that's for the i've got to clean that up that's full of my the trouble is i like to work on cars as well that's where i create a lot of mess where i actually do sand and stuff like that. but that's what outside looks like at the moment i don't know if you can see that on camera oh my god yeah, look how much space he's got dave space. and but not just that do you know what i'm gonna yeah. pull up Place on the thing as well. The space around like, the back is fine. I, I could have could... 40 cars at least. I would have the 40 thing is, cars out there at least. The space you're going to show behind isn't technically mine. That's part of the um that's part of the building behind, but the landlord's just taken that on himself and isn't using the car park, so I could do a deal to rent that, and that's all nicely tarmac with like parking spaces all in it. Oh, I'll show Dave out of I'll show out the back. What's this your question? Mess, yeah, uh, zero RP. So this isn't being used at the moment out here. Oh my gosh. See that? That isn't being used out there at the moment. I could uh, do a deal to rent if I wanted to, but I'd have to take staff on to fill it all and keep all the cars clean and tidy and all that, wouldn't I? I, I see where you're coming from, though. At the same time, I uh, envy you because it's just it's just you on your own, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and, but at the same time, what I really like about having my own business is, is having the comradeship of going to work and being with, you know, James, the salesman, Wayne, the valeter, and, you know, two heads are better than one, you know, when you're sharing a problem together. Yeah, um, even just down to, could, could, you, could you grab that phone? I cannot take another call at the minute. Do you know what I mean? That's what I've said to James before. I was just like, I couldn't do what you do. I couldn't work on my own. I just... Like, yeah, I'd just be depressed. You know I'm so happy working on my own. You give me this place on my own for the day and give me some, some paint work to do or some wheels to refurb. I don't want to see someone the entire day. It's really weird because my background is all sales as well. And all I've ever done is sales. Yeah. And I'm the grumpiest pe bastard when it comes to people. It's really weird that you get into these environments. Like maybe that helps. I don't know. Um, I, mean, I have people here working on like set rates for the day and I'm stressed. It stresses me out really badly. I'm like, why aren't you getting on with that? Why haven't you done, you know, what you and then they don't do things quite the way I want them done. It's probably my problem on it is anybody else. But yeah, I mean, like you now, then basically. How are you how are you not like you've got like five or six staff at your place? I mean, that they could just be well, this is this is something we're, wall, couldn't they? another time we can be like talking about hiring staff because there is like Dave's talked about on his podcast, there is like that massive hurdle of hiring staff. But once you hire one, you realize they pay for themselves and more. And then you do the next yeah. one. And you're like, okay, that's brought us even more work in and everything's run smoother. And it then you realize I can't afford not to employ people. It's, it's, uh, it's there's a, that first person you hire full time is terrifying. It is. I'd like the full time manager. Take, take James, take someone on part time, a valitor yeah. stroke driver stroke. Whatever. That's exactly what I need. That is actually exactly what I need because I could get so many more cars prepped quicker. Like today, everything's on hold because I'm doing this. I've got to do a set of wheels for a sportage. I've got to yeah. repaint a set. So that and so I've got a Ford Focus outside that needs a machine polish. If that is that could be up for sale today, and I've got a cash cut, it just needs a quick Hoover out because it's that clean. They could both be up for sale today, but they won't be for sale for the next two or three days. A lot of those cars won't be for sale for another two weeks because I'm doing a lot of myself. So that that would probably be beneficial. But it's finding the right person. It's like your chap. You could see your... Put, I'm going to put day. your email address on the screen now for this. If, you're stuck, <laughs> if people want that job, because people well, just over themselves for it, speak to James. So, so we done a video last week, and um, I've, put, I've actually put an advert on Indeed for a, a, a car buyer, because... Yeah. I, I don't really like buying... No, I do like buying cars, don't get me wrong, but I had this like crazy idea that if I could just find somebody who could search for cars on like auto trade, you know, private cars for sale. Private car stuff, yeah, yeah. yeah private car stuff and um, he could, you know, source them and I, I'll give him like £100 a car and 
I put an advert on, on on Indeed and I've had loads of people getting in touch. And then James yeah. on the video, last week's video, someone rang about the job and James mentioned it. And then somebody seen it from the YouTube channel and he rang us up yesterday and he's like, look, please can I come and work for you? He's like, I just, I watch you, your videos. I love everything about you. And, and basically what I'm trying to say is these are the people you want working for you who are passionate. Yeah, yeah that's the thing. You know, you're someone who's enthusiastic. And yeah. That's yeah, well, that's what I was going to say about your video on the garage next door. Yeah. Um, the garage next door, not getting your car prepped. It was interesting to see for me how your um, was it Wayne, your valeter, yeah, like how sort of like into your business he is, even though he's an employee, he's like proper, like he was, he's he was, not an he employee, was, he's it was emotional because he cared. It was emotional because he actually gave a shit. That's the that's the difference, isn't it? 